Hello, and today is day 294, and we are reading from Matthew chapter 13 and Luke chapter 8. Jesus is giving to us the keys to the kingdom. These are divine principles and rich insights, uh, actually mysteries that have been withheld um, from people who are not walking in the kingdom or not a part in the spirit. So they are concealed on the one side, but for those of us that are hungry and are willing to pursue, uh, the spirit of God will reveal these deep secrets to us. Uh, he <clears throat> uncovers some amazing realities. Jesus uncovers on amazing realities uh, in these few chapters. Now, especially as it pertains to the sower or the parable of the sower. Now, Jesus kind of describes this. The sower goes out to sow seed. Uh, Jesus is the one who sows the good seed. Now, some of the seed falls by what's referred to as the wayside. And uh, this side path is where men would often walk. And the Bible tells us, or Jesus tells us, that the birds would come. And this represents Satan, Satan stealing the seed, uh, snatching it away uh, out of the heart of the one of which the seed has been sown to. In fact, Jesus said, lest they should believe and be saved. So these are individuals to, who do hear it, but they don't receive it. Um, they do not understand it. And so Satan comes and steals it away. Then Jesus tells us there's seed that fell on stony ground. There's no depth of soil here. It's uh, where the seed kind of sits on the surface there, and it might actually sprout forth, but the sun comes out and it scorches, it dries up, and the plant withers away. That is Jesus here telling us, that those who receive the seed on a stony heart, stony ground, they hear. In fact, they receive it with joy, uh, Jesus tells us, and they believe for a while, but they don't have any root. And as a result of that, in time of what Jesus refers to in time of temptation, uh, tribulations, persecutions, because of the word, they stumble and they fall away. Okay, so then, then he speaks about seed that falls on the thorn or the thorny ground. And he refers to them as those, they hear the word, they receive the word, they actually go out, and, uh, but they are choked. Um, thorns have a way of uh, growing and beginning to just take over ground. So seed, good seed can start well, but then the thorns begin to gradually uh, choke that uh, life of the good seed or the good plant out. Uh, in fact, Jesus describes it this way. The uh, thorns represent the good seed being choked out with the cares of this life. In fact, he says riches and pleasures of life and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and uh, he, it becomes unfruitful. And uh, Jesus says it this way, brings no fruit to maturity. So we have a, a stunted growth here until it finally, it just simply uh, dies. And then finally, Jesus tells us that the good seed is sown on good soil. And this is one who hears the word, receives the word, understands the word with a good and a noble heart. And then these key words that Jesus speaks about, like keep it, that is they receive the word and they keep it. And secondly, they bear fruit with patience. And um, so when we look at these different territories or grounds here, some of you might be thinking, well, I kind of see myself at different points in different stages of my life. Well, maybe you would have hints of that. Uh, hopefully you've never been content to remain there because if you had, uh, it would have died and you probably wouldn't be here today as far as a follower of Christ. But, but the four grounds do alert us to something and that is the fact that we have four but only one 
bore fruit. Only one was good uh, fruit, good soil, <clears throat> which suggests that uh, only 25% of those who the seed is sown into the heart are going to remain true and remain uh, pure. 75% of the people are either going to be seed that falls on the wayside and Satan steals it away from them or it's going to, seed's going to fall on stony ground and temptation and uh, tribulation, persecutions, they fall away, uh, stumble, or it's going to be seed that falls on thorny ground where uh, the pleasures and the riches of this life and the deceitfulness of them uh, chokes out the word. And, and so the good soil represents those of us who've heard it, we've received it with joy, and we keep it, and we bear good fruit. So that's a great warning to us of the importance of keeping it, uh, bearing fruit with patience, because 75%, as we see it from this word, if this is an indication of it, uh, are going to reject uh, the word of God and will fall away. So we guess we shouldn't be surprised the vast number of people who hear it and then we find them falling away from the faith. Now the parable of the wheat and the tares also demonstrates principles of the kingdom. There's there's the good seed that is sown by Jesus and the field which represents the world and the good seed is the seed of the, uh, the sons of the kingdom um, and, and the tares are the sons of the wicked one and the enemy is sowing uh, the evil seed, the, the tares, and, um, and he's the devil. The enemy who sowed is the devil. And, and the harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers, Jesus describes here as the angels. And the tares are going to be gathered in the end, and they'll be burned in the, fi with, in the fire. The righteous are going to be gathered and will shine uh, forth uh, in the kingdom of God. Jesus will send his angels to separate. And uh, and then we see here all uh, those who've been offended or who have practiced lawlessness uh, will reap the consequences of their decision. What a absolute clear representation and distinctions of the two kingdoms and the two lives. There's no other options. You're either in the kingdom of God or you're not. You're either living for God or you're living for the powers of darkness. And uh, and we understand the furnace of fire, which um, many people don't want to hear about, but Jesus is referring to this, of course, the judgment and the finality of all things. But the righteous are going to shine forth in the kingdom of God. Jesus is giving incredible revelations and mysteries of the secrets of the kingdom. And uh, uh, we know that the Bible tells us that they've been kept from the people of the dark side from understanding it. Uh, but you and I have been given deep and great revelation of these truths. These are things that we can study and so many truths could be lifted from the pages of the scripture. You and I uh, stick with it, cling to it, don't back down, don't get deceived, hang on. It's going to get more difficult as we approach the end of the age, but you, it will be worth it all when uh, we get to the end and we reap our reward.